Hey, welcome back to the pause. Now, often when we talk about stories, it's meant to cause some change in society. Well, guess what? That process has already begun for Seth Kwame Boateng, and the work he's done as regards the conditions in Ghana's prisons. He's returned from a one-month training program, human rights training program organized by the Fordham University Law School. We also know that his documentary, Left to Rot, was premiered, actually screened at that school uh, as part of efforts to generate support for the Ghana Prison Service. He joins me now in the studio. He's returned with some good news. Seth, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Francis. I must say, uh, welcome back from Thank the United you. States. Thank How you. was the trip? Uh, it was exciting, uh, uh, and of course, tiring as well. But, uh, you know, uh, God helped us to, to do a lot. So we are grateful to God, and we are also grateful to uh, multimedia and uh, our, our uh, viewers. Yeah. Okay. We did a lot together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you've come with a bundle of good news for the Ghana Prison Service. Why don't you unwrap it for us? What okay. is the good news you have? So, again, uh, you mentioned um, I was at the Fordham Law School for two weeks. Um, they were training us on human rights issues. So, they took us through all the UN charters and all those things. Then, the, we screened the documentary. We had a number of people come to see it. Um, the Association of Ghanaian Lawyers in America, they were present. We had some human rights. Um, activists also based in the United States of America. We got lectures from Fordham University and other universities as, as well. Then we got Ghanaians who were also there and uh, they, were, they were shocked. They were wondering if we are still not practicing slave trade in Ghana. Because if we were not happy that we had people to put us in that state and after we got our liberty, we have decided to put ourselves back in that state, then they, they, they were not happy with that. Okay. For example, so I got the Association of Ghanaian Lawyers. Uh, they have a major meeting coming up in the next month or so, and they are discussing how they can come down and support the Justice for Our program. They, have, they believe that we need more lawyers to, to be on the field to help these people because they need advocates, people to speak on their behalf. Uh, they are also looking at ways they can get other NGOs in America to bring down things. You understand? I, I kept telling them that the prison is a whole community. So everything we need in the community, we need those same things in the prisons. So talk of health care, water, sanitation, all those things, we need them in the prison. Okay. So I was able to, to, to tell them this, and um, they, they bought into it, actually. They bought into it. And uh, other, others who were there also made pledges. They are also looking at ways they can bring down um, things for the prisons. They had concern about duties, you understand? So in the past, they had tried bringing down items to the hospitals, but they got to Ghana and they had issues with du duty payment. Mm -hmm. So I got clearance again from the interior ministry whilst I was there that anyone willing to bring down items for the prisons, they should just ship them and they're going to get clearance. So I got that. And the good news again is that um, the prisons have started getting water, boreholes. Across the country? Across the country. We have started in Kumase. So as I speak... Kumasi Central Prison has a new mechanized borehole. Wow, that's good news. That was finished just this afternoon. Just this afternoon. And it's worth, the, the cost involved is around 3,500 pounds. And an end, or a foundation has decided to do this and replicate this across the country, in no all prison across the country. Okay. Yesterday, I, we, our viewers will soon see, will sh will soon see the, the visuals of the water coming out of the of the bubbles, yeah. So they will uh, see they the videos for video, that. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So that's one prison, Kumasi Central Prison, one of the biggest, in fact, in the country, mm. gets in this uh, mm. water facility. How many other prisons do we have across the country that will we, get you this? You know, we have forty-three prison installations. Okay, but they are targeting the regional uh, prisons. Okay, okay, because they have <clears throat> a number of inmates there. They have challenges with water. What to drink has been a problem. So they have started from Kumasi. Uh, the information I have is that from Kumasi, they are moving to Sunyane, up to the north. They'll do that across the country. And it's a big deal for the prisons. You know, water to drink was a problem. How much more water to bath? Mm -hmm. So some were there with without no water to bath. And some water to drink, as I mentioned, they had difficulties with that, with that. No wonder they had skin diseases and all those things. Okay. Yeah. It means that that side will be sorted exactly. pretty much. Exactly. Okay. So what are good thing, good intervention mm. that's come through? What are the pledges we made? Okay. So we also looked at health care. And again, uh, we had people pledging to ship down drugs for, for the inmate. 
they are looking at um, drugs for KV, uh, scabies, for uh, um, um, gonorrhea, for tuberculosis, for malaria, uh, high blood pressure. They are looking at all these drugs. Yeah, yeah, last Sunday, I had a discussion with one gentleman from Canada. And interestingly, not only people in America have bought into this. We had calls from UK because I was interviewed on a number of radio stations. Exactly. Some even in the United States of Amer uh, in the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. they called me, and in America I spoke on like eight different radio stations from a number of um, states, mm -hmm. uh, speaking to Ghanaians, speaking to um, even Americans there about the need to support us. And I made them know that you might think you're in America, so the situation does not affect you. Come to Ghana and get yourself in a problem, and you see that you realize that you needed to help. Um, one woman called to share her story when she came down. On one Friday, she was driving. She was stopped by the police. They asked of something she didn't have, so they took her to the police station. They were about putting her in when she realized that she knew somebody. And mind you, she was leaving for the state on Monday, mm -hmm. and she was arrested on Friday. So if she didn't know anybody in Ghana and had not been able to call, you know the implication. She, behind bars. she was going, yeah. She was going to be in till the Monday. She was supposed to leave the Monday, and the Monday they were going to send her to court. So they all felt that they needed to help. You might think you are in the United States, so you are you are, you, you, sh this you shouldn't close care to you. about mm -hmm. this. But look at um, the the spread of diseases, the contagious diseases in the prisons. Uh, it wouldn't affect you, but it will affect somebody close to you, and you okay. might have to send money down to help the person. Okay, yeah. so uh, the borehole we're speaking about mm. uh, for Kumasi, that's the one uh, that's been constructed. As Seth mentioned, it has work has been done as of this afternoon. Mm. It's now ready for use. So uh, inmates at the Kumasi prisons will have the opportunity to have clean potable water uh, at the prisons coming out of this mechanized borehole facility that has been provided by a non-governmental uh, non organization mm. seeking to replicate this across the country. This is really, really good news, especially for the kind of problems that we've seen in Ghana's prisons across the country, 47 correctional facilities suffering all manner of problems from access to water, good food, medicine, among others. This is just the beginning of a very elaborate program to improve living conditions in Ghana's prisons. This is certainly good news, Seth. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy seeing this happen. And I'm sure that for many who are watching now, you will feel the same. If you can support, why not? You can. Because you never know who may end up on the wrong side of the law and end up in uh, Ghana's presence. Seth, uh, you mentioned that you had a number of interviews in the United mm. States. Yes, the response has been good. People have pledged. But are we drawing closer to finality, as in improving the conditions in real time? Or well, there's still a lot more that needs to be done? No, we have a lot more to do. And um, government alone can't do this job. Government is overwhelmed. That's why um, we are calling on other bodies to come and help. Um, we need to build more um, remand homes. And before I went to the United States, I had a meeting with the president, President Joe Mahama. Mm -hmm. I had a meeting with him, and he promised me that said, I have started a remand home at his own prisons. And I'm promising you, I've instructed that another one is built in Kumasi as soon as possible. And I'm going to replicate this across the country. That was what the president told me in a private meeting I had with him in his office. And that he's going to do all these things to help decongest the prisons. Aside that, they have a number, this is a fiesta project. Uh, you know, the Prison Service Council is also going around um, pleading to embassies mm -hmm. and um, corporate bodies to support the prisons. We, we, we have to help. Government alone can't do, do this job. And we need clinics for them. We, we have to um, have drugs in their infirmaries. Ultimately, we have to get them a prison hospital. You know, we have police hospital. Yes. They need a prison hospital. And it, before that, we must have small, small clinics around the prisons. One, the reason why doctors um, uh, deny postings or they, ref they refuse postings there is because of these infections in the prison. I, the first, when I was doing Locked and Forgotten, I wasn't wearing lens. After lockdown, for example, I'm wearing this because of an infection I picked from the prison. So doctors don't want to go there. So if we're able to get them clinics outside the prison, just around, but mm -hmm. outside, not within, doctors are willing to go there and help. 
And yes. also about e even even the funds for it. Because I remember there was a story we did about uh, the Insaum Hospital mm. owing oh, some yeah. amounts of money exactly. to a hospital. Because that has their budget allocation has also been cut off. Okay. Has been divided by more than half. So how much, uh, how much money do they have to, to, to take care of all of exactly. these issues? Okay. Uh, for those who made the pledges, how soon are they coming down to fulfill them? No, there are some procedures they have to go through. Okay. Um, some have to ship, and they need um, some paperwork done. Um, we know that some doctors are also coming down. Hopefully by, the, by December, they will, be, they will come down to embark on outreach programs in the prisons. Uh, they want to go and screen prison, uh, prisoners across the country. So all these things are being done. And I'm happy to say that radio stations uh, in America, I mean, Ghanaian uh, based radio stations in America, are taking up this challenge. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, when you go to Delaware, there's a radio station in Delaware. They are uh, receiving all the support. They are coordinating. When you go to Virginia, there's another one. They are coordinating. And they want to come down and do the project themselves. So if they have to... Um, build a remand home, they want to build and name it after them. Okay. You understand? And that's the way to go. Um, they have to, we have to adopt the prisons. So another uh, group, maybe Ghanaians in New York, who say we want to adopt the Kofredia prisons and mm -hmm. help. So they are doing exactly that. In November, Ghanaians in um, America are meeting. You now we have Association of Akans, Association of Aquapims. They are all coming together. They have an umbrella body. They are coming together, uh, together in November for a major fundraising ceremony. And they are going to raise money to come and support the prison. So these are all good things that I hope and pray we see uh, we see it um, happen very soon. Okay. This help that is coming in from the United States of America, I'm sure that for those who are here in Ghana who have the means to support, something little, something small, mm. to help this endeavor will be good. So we ensure that people who get in there don't come out hardened, but rather reformed and can integrate in society for the future. But Seth, uh, before you go, good job done for Left to Rot. But I know that in your travels in the United States, you didn't only talk about Left to Rot. <laughs> you talk about, uh, you also talked about other documentaries that you Exactly. Done. I remember uh, I got a call from Philadelphia. Um, their children's hospital, a team of researchers and professors wanted me to speak to them about sickle cell. You, you know, two years ago, I did a uh, documentary on sickle cell. Yeah. Uh, pain from care cells, they had heard about it. So they asked me to come to Philadelphia Children's Hospital to just educate them on my findings. And I, it was interesting. I felt a bit sad when I saw the Children's Hospital. Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. What did it look no, like? No, viewers will soon see the, 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 <laughs> the images. That's a hospital for children. Mm -hmm. Nowhere close to our Kolebu. Nowhere close to our Konfunochi. Nowhere close to 37 hospital. And so that's for children? Yeah. I asked one professor, I, I doubt people die in this hospital. He said, yeah, they die. But if only it's time for you to die, then you die. <laughs> if not, <laughs> forget about so that. that so yeah, so, yeah, so okay. the team of researchers had met and I was briefing them on sickle cell. So that's the building I'm talking to you about. That is Children's the Children's hospital. hospital. Philadelphia Children's Hospital. And it's, it's big. It's big. See. Yes, it's big. Children's, uh, children's hospital. hospital. Yes, okay. and I, I, hope, I hope and pray that one day we get something like this in this country. And the government didn't build this. Donors, people donated. Do you they have provided funds? Yes. They just donated. So they'll be there and they'll, somebody will come and say, okay, I have $200 million. I want to build this so that you name the project after me. That's it. That's it. That's it. I guess the communal spirit should be something we should mm. be adopting here in Ghana. But said before you go, for those who are watching and are so willing to help in this cause and improving conditions in Ghana's prisons, how should they go about it? Whatever you have, just come to Joy, Joy News. Just come to us, mm. the Joy FM building or the multi multi TV building. Just come, give us anything that you have. We have to go and help them. If you're outside Ghana and you want to ship down items. Just do it in the name of Project Efiase. Project Efiase. And you're not going to pay any duty. There, there's going to be a waiver for you mm. to bring the items in. So anything, anything we need in the community, we need those same things in the prisons. So if you're watching, don't say it's their problem. Mm -hmm. It's also your problem. You don't know when you find yourself there. Yeah. 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 So thank you for coming. And I'm thank sure you. that for many who've watched, uh, you talk about the things you had to go through in... Uh, the United States of America, aside the lunch I saw you have uh, via Skype. <laughs> it has been a good time. 
trying to gather a lot of support for this very, very good initiative in helping to improve conditions in Ghana's prisons. Thank you, Seth, Thank for your you. time. I'm uh, the journalist of the year, until another one comes through. He's the one. Let's see what happens for this year. Thank you for coming, Seth. Now, Adata Tope in the Greater Accra region is a community surrounded almost wholly by water. The community is sandwiched between the sea and a lagoon, but they have no access to clean drinking water. Water hardly flows through the two standpipes serving over 3,000 people there. This has forced residents to purchase clean water at exorbitant cost, which they say is leaving them with no money to even educate their children. Joseph Opokugapo visited the community and has come through with this report. They have water all around them, the sea to the left and the lagoon to the right, but they have no water for cooking and drinking. The residents need to rely on water from more than 10 kilometers away to survive. Large tanker drivers bring in clean water to sell to residents at very high costs. Water takes about one, one to two months before it comes to one or it flows once in the month. And when it flows to it, it takes about only two to three hours, then it stops. So the people in the community depend on purchasing water from the tanker this thing. Uh, owners. Uh, it's 60 Ghana per day. And these drums that we can see here, this one is 8 CD. So imagine how if you have about, let's say, 8 or 10 children, it means a day you buy more than, you purchase more than 20 CD. The Ghana Water Company has constructed two standpipes in the community, but water hardly flows through them. The residents are not happy. The water has stopped flowing for over three months now. That is this particular one. And they had to go and buy water from tankers. Because she buys one polytank for 70 Ghana cities, it is affecting her economically and she can't even pay, buy food and pay for the children's fees. When she buys water about 10 cities on the spot, she uses all in washing and then uh, for cooking and other things. Then she has to go and buy again. So it means that for the day she spends so much on water. She's pleading with government to come to their aid. The chief of Adato Tope, Siofilo Sagbakla, says efforts to get the water company to fix the problem with the pipelines have proved futile. He wants government to construct a water desalination plant, as has been done for the people of Teshi, to treat the seawater here for drinking. For the sea, the water is always there. So when government fixes a facility here and do the desalination, I don't think that there will be any problem. Water company officials in the Adar area say they are working on fixing the problem with the water flow. For Joy News, Joseph Opokugapo, Adar Totope. Right, that's the story from Adar Totope. After the break, we'll bring you some politics. It has been a busy day in Tamale. There's been a big demonstration. We'll give you details and speak to some of the organizers and find out whether or not this action will yield any results on the complaints they are making today. Also, in the Volta region, uh, there's been a news conference by the NDC. We'll fill you in with all the details after the break. Stay with us.